Good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation and for the uh, introduction. I'm so happy to be here with all of you uh, to have this uh, great final conference. We have uh, to uh, say thank you to, first of all, Commission, then to uh, coordinators, and of course, to all work package leader and uh, their teams for the great collaboration over these uh, years. Uh, National Public Health Organization is the leader of uh, work package three, evaluation of the action, and I'm the leader of the evaluation team. Of course, today here I'm representing the whole team. Katerina and Lazarus are with us uh, today. Uh, Nick Pizzolas uh, was not able to travel with us, but we have to say a great um, thank you to him for his contribution and support uh, to um, the evaluation process. Uh, evaluation of a project is um, uh, an important and useful tool as it is, um, helps to monitor the progress and uh, guide us uh, to the process to improve effectiveness and efficiency. At the same time, it's a complex task um, and need to prepare an evaluation uh, plan and a strategic um, must be, uh, which must be followed describing the tools, methods, outcomes, uh, uh, output and indicators. SHARP, as um, all we know, is a large joint action with uh, 10 work packages and uh, 33 deliverables and 40 uh, milestones. Uh, the evaluation of such a project is a really uh, challenge, especially during a crisis period uh, uh, which was closely related with the uh, objective, uh, objectives of the project. Uh, SHARP, evaluation of SHARP consists of two parts, the internal and external evaluation. Internal evaluation was an ongoing process throughout the project. And the external evaluation was conducted by a subcontractor uh, um, in two cycles. The first cycles covered the period month 26 to 32, and the second uh, cycle six months before the end of the project. That means uh, month 48 to uh, month uh, 54. Both. Um, uh, internal and external evaluation uh, have had prepared a midterm report uh, to assess the progress up to month uh, 24. Some of our key uh, observations of internal midterm report are, first of all, that SHARP have been very much affected by COVID pandemic. Uh, there was evident limited staff availability as a lot of people involved in SHARP were also heavily involved in their national health response teams. We have already discussed yesterday uh, about um, this uh, finding. Um, challenges in IHR 2005 and the European Decision 1018 implementation. And SHARP is considered successfully by most of the people involved, despite the challenges faced during the uh, first two years. And of course, administratively, it was handled in a very efficient way. Now, regarding our final evaluation report and uh, our key findings, first of all, deliverables and milestones are properly completed despite the difficulties. COVID-19 uh, pandemic had an inevitable impact in the joint action as a whole. Changes in workshops, tasks, outcomes, and materials content was required due to different priorities. Limited staff availability, uh, that means that IHR and public health trained professionals, we need uh, to focus on this and need much more uh, trained professionals. Excellent networking opportunities and practice exchange. 
need to implement material and knowledge gained uh, in national level, need support on technical and scientific level, especially in low GNI countries, more usage of websites, social media as means of communication, a source of information. It is also evident that actions and events resume successfully in the uh, time following COVID-19 active period, indicating coherence, productive management, and good collaboration among partners. Effective multi-sectoral collaboration remains a challenge in most, if not all, countries. Consensus and related tools are provided and be available for usage. Increasing and strengthening the capacities related to IHR, of course, in um, of countries with low GNI are extremely difficult, especially during a uh, pandemic period. IHR plans, regulation, and standard operation procedures require qualified and trained staff to implement them. Tools have been provided for training and improving IHR implementation, recommendation for chemical health threats, recommendation for high consequence infection disease clinical approach. And now regarding our recommendations. Implementation and use of SHARPS tools in national level, this is crucial and essential, we have a discussion later. Investments in the public health workforce. Gaps in capacity are not always captured by evaluations and much information exists in experiences gained through after action reviews and exercise reports. So in cooperation with ECDC, WHO and Commission, the possibility to collect and learn from these sources should be explored. Regarding preparedness planning, we should be prepared for the next uh, uh, crisis. Uh, encourage partners, countries to disseminate the knowledge and exchange best practices and reinforce intersectoral collaboration. Low GNI countries need more support to improve their indicators. Of course, our last recommendation is follow up and invest on sustainability of all these uh, deliverables. Uh, that's from the internal evaluation uh, team. Thank you very much. and. Um, giving the floor to Dimitra for, from our external evaluator uh, team. Sorry, so uh, good morning for me as well. Um, it's really exciting being here and listening to all these very, very interesting uh, presentations and discussions taking place in the last two days, so thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to present some preliminary results from the um, uh, final external evaluation process so far. Um, so uh, external, external evaluation objectives and uh, the methods have already been presented at previous meetings so we'll not go through them again in detail uh, today. Uh, the only thing I would like to uh, point out at this point is that we are now in the um, uh, synthesis phase of the second cycle, as uh, Eleonora already mentioned, we're not engaged throughout the whole action. We are just engaged in two six-month action, uh, six-month cycles, and um, uh, the final external evaluation report is deliverable 3.5, and it is expected to be finalized at the end of the joint action in September. And our plan is to disseminate it um, for uh, comments we hope uh, four weeks before uh, final submission. Um, now, in terms of tools, um, the ones we use are pretty much the same as the ones uh, we use for the internal evaluation uh, process, uh, the interim, sorry, external evaluation process. Uh, the main differences for this cycle is that apart from interviews with uh, work package leaders and co-leaders, we also conducted interviews with uh, key stakeholders. So. Uh, we talked with people from ECDC, DigiSante, WHO and uh, Hadea. And also for this uh, cycle we performed a SWOT analysis, uh, the results of which are the main subjects of this, uh, uh, the subject of this presentation. 
Uh, now, moving on to the results, uh, del deliverable my milestone specific indicators are all still under progress, so they're going to be presented in detail in the final uh, report. Now, moving to challenges, I think most of them are pretty much mentioned uh, already. Main challenge, of course, were related to uh, COVID-19 pandemic, and this includes limited staff availability, both in terms of time, also as numbers, HR. Although, um, after listening to all the conversation the last two days, our feeling is that this was uh, highlighted by COVID pandemic rather than caused by it. Um, new people were involved, so a big turnover. Uh, obviously, new people had to catch up. Uh, pandemic waves reached different countries uh, in different times. Um, and uh, that means coordination was even harder, especially between countries who are involved in uh, the, uh, the, the sharing tasks. Uh, again, changes in task and outcomes due to change um, in needs. Uh, and although the pandemic is now over, uh, the consequences on public health are still very intense. Uh, we heard very good um, uh, presentation yesterday with numbers. Um, so public health demands are still intense and they require attention. Um, it was also noted that this is a very, very large joint action with many work packages, uh, lots of partners and affiliated entities, and also was noted there might be sufficient leaks between work packages. Uh, and the delays and extensions, although absolutely necessary, uh, they have increased the workload towards the end of the joint action, and this is more apparent, it's a challenge for mostly for the horizontal uh, packages and of course coordination. Now, uh, we're quickly going to move to the SWOT analysis. Um, we try to include as many comments as possible from the interviews. Um, we present uh, separately the comments from work package leaders and co-leaders and uh, key stakeholders. Um, in order to save some time, um, the ones in bold are the ones mentioned more frequently amongst uh, interviewees. Um, so, uh, strength, strengthening uh, the Emerge Laboratory network was uh, considered um, a strength from uh, work package uh, leaders. Uh, also, the fact that um, a lot of European countries, and not just EU uh, countries, but uh, a wider European network was engaged. Uh, of course, increased cooperation between uh, member states, uh, but also uh, on a cooperation on a national or a regional uh, level. Um, the theme couldn't be more uh, relevant, and it increased understanding uh, of collaboration uh, both and preparedness, both in different sectors as well as among uh, the general public, which is which is quite important. Uh, it was also a good opportunity. Um, for uh, public health authorities to understand um, that preparedness is actually cheaper than response, because things, uh, uh, things like that count. Um, and of course, networking, building personal relationships, and exchanging solutions, experiences, and best practices, I think that was noted by almost um, everyone. Uh, now, moving on to the key stakeholders uh, interviews, um, apart from what is already mentioned uh, before, um, again, networking, uh, big, um, uh, a lot of uh, European countries. Um, it was a good opportunity for uh, countries' key focal points to get exposed to international level and expand their network. Um, uh, addressing key issues for preparedness, budget, good timing again, uh, amount of diversity of institutes and uh, uh, the collaboration between them, and last but not least, leadership by DHL. Uh, moving on to the weaknesses, the size again of the uh, joint action uh, of SHARP was mentioned uh, quite a few times. Also, that it was noted that maybe the objectives was not uh, smart enough, were not smart enough. Um, it was also noted that maybe the, the planning phase was uh, short um, and what was recommended maybe more face-to-face -face meeting just with the work package leaders at the beginning of the joint action in order to uh, specify uh, the objectives. Also that would increase um, coordination and collaboration between work packages. Um, it would also mean a, a larger planning phase that um, a better mapping of existing tools and, and um, products um, 
would be more uh, sufficient in order to avoid duplicates. Um, lack of scientific guidance, giving direction of sharp vision, uh, especially after COVID pandemic uh, was also um, uh, mentioned. That was also mentioned in the interim uh, report. Um, again, uh, turnover of people, uh, people being involved in SHARP also being involved in other projects, including the uh, COVID-19 response. Uh, staff shortage and personal turnover, and th that also, especially in low GNI countries, which had a direct effect on um, uh, participation uh, in, in uh, workshops and in uh, trainings, so on, on a very practical level. And the thing that was mentioned more than anything was COVID fatigue. Um, although people understand how important preparedness is now, apparently nobody wants to hear about it <laughs> very much. That includes authorities and general uh, public. Um, again, key stakeholders, apart from, uh, again, competing priorities, people not being involved, and that would actually be something that would be desired going on in the future, like maybe more uh, experienced staff would be dedicated to join actions, uh, change in infrastructure, um, and uh, better interaction links between work packages would be desired. Now, opportunities, uh, again, uh, promote uh, preparedness, of course, now that everybody understands its uh, value, sustain the eMERGE laboratory network, um, strengthen working relationship between institutions on a personal level, uh, building networks because of the diversity of uh, SHARP, um, um, increase public awareness. Also, this was this this joint action was a good opportunity for uh, the, the the technical packages. So laboratories and, and clinical network collaboration uh, uh, was an opportunity, and also involved chemical network um, in each country, as chemical networks are not always part of um, public health institutes. Um, and overall, one big network that talks the same uh, language about IHR is, is also considered a big opportunity. Key stakeholders, apart from what already been mentioned, um, use the product, uh, identified as opportunity to use the products outputs directly in COVID-19 response. Also the fact that what we learned from COVID-19 was fed back in the product, so that works, it's a relationship that works vice versa that was mentioned earlier. Um, provide input in IHR review, uh, new funding opportunities, but uh, very importantly, this was a good opportunity for analysis on how the IHR legislation reflects, but also analysis on national settings and share this information with uh, partners, other partners. Now moving on to the threats. The main threat is getting the message lost and, and all the work that has been done, just forgetting about it once everything is wrapped up. Um, so, not getting the message to the right people. Sorry, if you if you allow me, because I thought that was actually um, quite important. Key stakeholders identified also as an opportunity, ideas for further initiatives from partners uh, themselves. And the War Package Aid training uh, platform and network uh, was used as an example. And I'm very happy it was actually mentioned earlier today. Uh, for the same reason. So initiatives like that w would be desired. Um, sorry about this. Uh, moving on to the threats, like we said, COVID fatigue, no political commitment, getting the message lost. Uh, other priorities, like we said, in, uh, after COVID-19. Uh, lack of building relation with professional association, inadequate engagement, and last but not least, not enough public health capacities, both um, and, and, and uh, human resources uh, to implement the outcomes. <clears throat> Key stakeholders, on top of that, uh, identified lack of internal dissemination. Again, countries not fully aware of their own power and not making connections between organizations and policymakers within their own country. Um, IHR review was maybe a threat to the deliverables. Uh, COVID-19, of course, pandemic and aftermaths and COVID fatigue and uh, all these um, uh, and the demands now in public health was consider is considered a threat. And uh, lack of general public involvement is a threat as well because essentially this is um, uh, the main target. Um, now, for recommendations and um, uh, some proposals from, uh, sorry, 
so, so we asked for recommendation on sustainability, both from uh, work package leaders and uh, key stakeholders. However, uh, in order to save some time, as well, some we, we conclude that we came up to some recommendation based on the external evaluation finding. That's my last slide, I promise. <laughs> and, uh, but we're not going to uh, discuss those in detail because it's going to be presented, discussed in the um, discussion panel later on, where Professor Christos Hadzikistodoulou will be representing the external evaluation team. So looking forward to that. Um, uh, Eleonora already uh, presented the uh, evaluation team. Uh, we would like to thank you and especially thank everyone taking part uh, to the interviews. We know everybody's time is limited, so this was really appreciated. Uh, we would also like to thank THL and Uti and Anna very much for your help. And of course, so the and uh, Eleonora Hadzipaskali. Uh, the external evaluation team is from the Department of Hygiene and Epidemiology in the University of Thessaly in Greece. It's led by Professor Chris Hadzi Christodoulou. Um, also, uh, Associate Professor Barbara Mukhtur is involved. Thank you very much to Elina Kostara. She, uh, she's in the team and she was really helpful. And myself is Dimitri Kafetsuli. Thank you very much. <laughs>